So units are used to describe things that we can measure, or in other words, they can describe our dimensions. So just trying to describe a dimension without a unit isn't very useful. So here's a little dialogue, and I heard this the other day for real. Uh, Sally was talking to Bill, and Sally said, hey, how far did you run this morning? And Bill said five, and Sally said, oh, five what? Bill, five lengths. Sally kind of looked at him and said, uh, five lengths of what? The gym, the field? And Bill says, no, just five length distance. And Sally just kind of looked at him and said, oh, oh. just wasn't quite sure where to go from there. And so what Bill needed to do is he needed to fill in and say five how are we describing this five? Is it is it five feet? Because if it's five feet, well, he didn't run very far. If it's five miles, he ran pretty far. Five kilometers is still pretty far. Uh, five meters, not so far. Uh, but it could have been gym lengths or something. But there needs to be something that describes what this five is, what this length was. And that's what we use units for. So... The number itself and the dimension usually isn't very useful until we put that unit on there. And there are a lot of units out there. And so it's, sometimes it's important to say, well, why are there so many units out there? And why are there so many unit systems? And I know everybody says, you know, the metric system is wonderful and we should only use that. I'm not convinced of that. I think that it's good that we have a lot of units. So the purpose of units is to not only describe something, but also so that it can be meaningful and convenient for us. So the English system, if we're just talking about length here, we have something like an inch. And for those of you who aren't familiar with using inches, or you don't use inches very often, it's a very awkward looking thing um, because it's not base 10. It's It doesn't size well. It's harder to do math with. But I like an inch because it's about the size of the first knuckle of your thumb. And so when you're describing something and you say, hey, this is about an inch big, you know, I can just kind of look at it and say, all right, yeah, I got a good idea of what that looks like. If somebody says something's the size of a foot, well, it's about the size of a foot. And so again, I can get this idea of saying, yeah, I, I know about what size that is. And then a mile, a lot of people say a mile is kind of abstract. A mile originally came from saying a thousand strides and a stride is two steps or two paces and so you take a, a thousand strides or in other words two thousand steps you've gone about a mile and interestingly enough that comes from the word milli mile and milli uh, meaning one thousand so one thousand strides but people are right it's it's convenient it, it it makes sense when you talk about those things but it's not very convenient when you want to do math because the math doesn't come out neatly because we're not using base 10. The metric system on the other hand, I doing math is very, very nice with it. I think that's why we use it in science a lot. Uh, we have something like a meter, which is, uh, well, to be honest, it's, it's kind of an awkward length. I can't really hold something that's a meter in my hand very well. Um, it's a little over three feet. It is originally, it was originally defined as one millionths the di distance from the equator to the North Pole. Now we use something with light and uh, light in a vacuum and how, how far it travels in a certain amount of time or the number of wavelengths in this. Uh, if we have a thousand of those, we call it a kilometer. If we have a thousandths of those, we call it a millimeter. So the math is really, really nice, but it's not so meaningful. If I say I have... Uh, a kilometer, okay, well, a kilometer is a thousand meters, and a meter is one uh, millionth the distance from the equator to the North Pole. It's a little bit more abstract, but it really depends on what you're looking at here. Are you looking at uh, making your calculations nice, or are you trying to really understand what's happening? And if you're used to using the metric system, if you've been using it for a while or your whole life, then it, it does both. It makes sense because you've grown up with it and you've used it a lot. Uh, some other units in English in the metric system would be mass. And in the English system, we use things like a slug or a pound mass. And in the metric system, we use things like grams and kilograms. For time, luckily, it's the same for both seconds, minutes, days, years. Uh, temperature, English system, Fahrenheit, metric system, Celsius, and Kelvin. Now, there's a whole lot other a whole lot of other units out there. I could have made a larger table, uh, 
The problem is, number one, I could keep adding to it. There's so many units out there that this table would either be huge or I'd never finish. But my thought is, here I've shown you a few of them, and I'm hoping that I just whet your appetite enough so that you want to go and search up some more of this stuff on your own. Just go ahead and go into a, a browser and search what units are in the English system or the metric system or uh, show me a list of units used in science or something. Go ahead and look around for a while and you might also find some people who discuss where they came from and a lot of the stories on where we came up with these units are really interesting and even though they're not necessarily going to help you with your your engineering and your science it it's still interesting to see how these developed over time and it gives us a better appreciation of why we have all these units.